sandere raka sandere le boria baba rika sandere le 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 ora ba sandere boria ba sandere bo ora ka sandere boria baba baba rika sandere le 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 raka sandere bo shika mama mama rika sandere boria baba baba ora ka sandere le 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 ora ba sandere le 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 rika sandere boria baba baba raka sandere le boria ba sande rika sandere le boria baba baba rika sandere boria ba sandere le Raka sandere boria ba 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 ra ba 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 Raka sandere le le le, rika sandere boria baba, raka sandere boria baba baba. Oh God, we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh raka sandere boria baba baba baba, rika sandere boria baba sandere boshika mama mama. In the mighty name of Jesus, and Lord, we are praying for an encounter this morning. We are praying for an encounter, an encounter, an encounter this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father, that everyone shall encounter you. Everyone shall encounter you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Kana, oh, Rapa Sandelele, Raka Sandelebo, an encounter with the person of Jesus, an encounter this morning, oh, Kana, in the mighty name of Jesus. Raka Sandelele, Rapa Sandelele, oh, God, we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Raka Sandelele, Rapa Sandelele, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Raka Sandere Boria Baba Baba Baba, Rika Sandere Boria Baba Sandere Boria Baba Baba, Raka Sandere Boria Baba Sandere Boria Baba Sandere Le, Oh, Raka Sandere Boria Baba Baba Baba, Oh, Raka Sandere Le Boria Baba Sandere Le, Rika Sandere Boria Baba Sandere Boria Baba Baba Baba, Rika Sandere Boshika Mama Mama Diande, Raba Baba 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 Diande Le Bo. Oh, we worship you, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we bless you. We worship you, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and of the living God. Oh, we worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. This is October. We are in the month of testimonies. We are in the month of testimonies. So I just want you to begin to release, to begin to release testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Even according to our theme scripture, Psalm chapter one twenty. Six uh, from this one, even Revelation, the Bible tells us that the devil has been overcome by the word of our testimonies uh, and by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, so this morning, uh, I just want you to begin to release uh, testimonies, uh, testimonies in our midst, uh, testimonies in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we release this morning uh, testimonies, uh, testimonies, oh God, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Raka uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, that every setback, oh God, is being turned into testimony. Every setback, sir, have been turned into testimonies this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, oh Lord. We release testimonies, oh God. Increase in our midst, oh God. Testimonies of healing. Testimonies of salvation. Testimonies of total. Testimonies of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Raka Samderebo. Testimonies of breakthroughs. Testimonies of mighty God. Of expansion. Testimonies of God of increase. Testimonies of fruitfulness. Testimonies of mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we release testimonies. In the name of Jesus, Raka Samderebo. Raba Baba 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 Raka Samderebo. Raba Samderebo. Raka Samderebo. Raba Baba, Raba Sandele Boria Baba, Oh Raba Sandele Boria Baba Sandele, Rika Sandele Boshika Mama Mama, Oh Raba Sandele Boria Baba Baba, Rika Sandele Boshika Mama Mama Mariande, Oh Raba Sandele Boria Baba Baba Baba, In the mighty name of Jesus, Oh Lord, Father, we thank you for the testimonies. We thank you, mighty God, for the testimonies in our midst. We thank you, mighty God. Oh God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we shall be filled with laughter in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall be filled 
righteous laughter and the songs of joy. Oh God, out of our mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise in the name of Jesus and of the living God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue to read this testimony. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 126, the Bible says, When the Lord brought back his exiles to, to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. It was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, What amazing things the Lord has done for them. Verse 3, the Bible says, Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as the streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Hallelujah. Those who, the Bible says, those who plant in tears will shout. This is a month of testimonies. You know, the Bible says that weeping may have endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. And we are in the month of testimony. We are testifying of the goodness of God. We are testifying of God, what God is about to do in our lives, in each and every one of your life. So I just want you to just trust God and say, Lord, this word is for me. This month I'm testifying of your goodness. I'm testifying of your faithfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and just release testimonies over your family, over your life, over whatever you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you this morning. We give you praise, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, we thank you for the testimonies, oh God. We give you praise, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we release testimonies in our families. We release testimonies, oh God. In our church, we release testimonies, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever our hands of God purpose to do, in the name of Jesus, testimonies, oh God. In our places, oh God, testimonies, oh mighty God. In our businesses, oh God, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Raka Samdele, Raba Baba Baba Bariam Dele, Raka Samdele, Riba Baba Baba Baba, Raka Samdele, Rika Samdele, Baba 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 in the name of Jesus, let us be pray and frustrate every plan of the enemy. In Jesus' name, the Bible tells us that he frustrates the plans of schemers so that they are weak. The work of their hands will not succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. That whatever the enemy meant for evil, God, God has turned it into good. So let us just frustrate every plan of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus concerning the church, concerning your life, concerning your ministry, concerning your job, concerning whatever you're doing. Let us just frustrate every plan of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, frustrating every plan of the devil in Jesus' mighty name that whatever he plans to do, it will not succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name, Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, oh Raka Sandere, Raka Sandere, Bori Aba Baba, oh Raba Sandere, every plan of the devil we frustrate, we confuse. In the mighty name of Jesus, we render powerless. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, nothing shall prevent 
us from getting those testimonies. Nothing shall prevent us from receiving those testimonies. Nothing shall prevent us from testifying in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we frustrate every plan, every plan in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, arise, arise, oh God, arise, arise, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, every enemy be scattered, every enemy be scattered, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Raka Samderele, Raba Baba 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 Baba, Raka Samderele, Raka Samderele, Raba Baba Baba Baba, Raka Baba Baba Baba, Raka Samderele, Rika Baba Baba Baba, Raka Samderele, Raba Baba Baba Baba, oh, God, we give you praise in the mighty name. Of Jesus, oh God, oh God, Raka Sandele, Raba Baba 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 Yamde, oh Raka Sandele, Raba Baba Baba Baba, oh Raka Sandele, Rika Sandele Baba Baba, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, we release the blood of Jesus, we release the blood, we release the blood, we release the blood, we release the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Oh, Raka Sake, Raba Baba Baba Baba, Raba Sandele, Rekerele, Raka Sandele, Raba Baba Baba Baba, Raba Baba Baba Baba, Rika Baba Baba Bariande, Oh, Raka Sandele, Rika Baba Baba Baba, Raba Baba Baba Bariande, in the mighty name of Jesus, Oh, Raka Sandele, Raba Baba Baba, in the mighty name of Jesus and of the living God, Hallelujah, we worship you, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let us thank God even for his word this morning. Let us appreciate God for his word. Let us thank God for, you know, let us release worship, release praise in our midst this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you praise in Jesus' So God is overthrowing every plan of the devil. And just go ahead this morning and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and give a clap offering unto the Lord this morning. short exhortation this morning and I just want to thank God even for this opportunity and I do not take it for granted that I can nervously stand here this morning hallelujah amen and this is the month you know of testimonies it has been declared and I just want to give a short exhortation that I have titled tend for my good hallelujah and just tell somebody it's tending for your good hallelujah amen in our theme scripture for the month, the Bible says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So the Bible, the writer, you know, was even speaking in a past tense, saying that he, they overcame him. Not that they will overcome, but he said they overcame. So this morning, just the fact that you are seated here this morning, you have overcome. We have overcome this morning. Hallelujah. And if you can just turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, the Bible reads, Genesis 50 and verse 20. Thank God I have all my scriptures noted down here. The Bible says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is in this day to save many people 
her life. So this was Joseph that was speaking to his brethren. And he was telling them that, you know, you meant it for good. You did not understand what you were doing at that moment. But God tend it. Or God changed the situation around for the, for, you know, for my good. And Joseph's life was turned around by God himself. So it's God himself, you know, that turns situation around. Hallelujah. And the to turn means to change, to cause a change. Something that is, you know, being transformed. We know how to turn around, for example, mean I'm changing all the directions and I'm changing in a 360 or, you know, vice versa, 360 degrees Celsius as they mean it in geography. So to turn means to cause a change. And Joseph was turned. And I believe that Joseph's life was just, he was just a normal, you know, boy who was enjoying his life. You know, he was having dreams and he was enjoying those dreams. And he enjoyed narrating those dreams to his brothers and, and parents. So he was just a normal boy. He would check up on his brother, normal life he's living. But at that point, the Bible says that, you know, his brother sold him into slavery. They sold him to the Ishmaelites. And after that, he was also sold to the Egyptian to the point that at the young age, the man became a slave. Hallelujah. And from a slave, he became a prisoner. Things changed. Things were changing, were turning into in, in, by, in Joseph's life. Uh, and the Bible says that finally he became second in command in that he was in a foreign land. Hallelujah. So it was God himself who turned the situation of Joseph around. Uh, and this morning I believe that as he turned that around, he's also able to turn around this morning, even in this month as we are testifying of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody again and tell them that it's turning around for your good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 12 and 13. Luke 21, verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, but before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, but it will turn out for you as a testimony, uh, as an occasion for a testimony. So the Bible says that they will bring you, you before kings. They will bring you before persecutors. They will not understand what they are doing. But this is what the Lord is saying. I'm going to turn it around for a testimony and you shall testify before people of the goodness of Jesus, of Jesus who is the one who saved, who came and delivered. So whatever it is it may be a persecution. You may be brought before, you know, some high counsel, but the Bible is saying this morning, it shall turn out for an occasion, for a testimony this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, just go ahead and give a hallelujah to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. So God cannot lie. If he has spoken it, I believe that he will also bring it. He will make it come to pass. In the book of Job 20, 42 verse 10, Job 42 verse 10, the Bible says, And the Lord returned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I will read it again. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So Job lost all, everything, let me say. He lost his children. He lost his, his wealth. His health, you know, was failing. You know, his family was shattered. Even maybe close friends, uh, the wife was saying, curse God and die. His cl close friends might have been given up on him. Even sometimes we write off some people. They might have said, it's over for Job. He's just waiting for, you know, for death. But the Bible says he turned the captivity of Job. And the Bible says that he gave him twice uh, as much as he had. So God turned the captivity. The Bible says that the Lord gave him twice as much as he had. So the, lo the, the Lord blessed Job's latter more than his beginning. He became even more greater than he was. So the enemy may have brought that situation to try and bring you down, to try and, and break you. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you are coming out with twice as much as you had before in the mighty name of Jesus. And this shall be our testimony in this month. Hallelujah. For God is faithful. He said in the book of John, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. 
that have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. So God is standing around this morning that you may testify and praise his name, you know, even before people in the mighty name of Jesus. So God is able to turn situations around, uh, you know, in testimony. He's able to turn it around for a testimony. Hallelujah. Pastor posted Psalms 126 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then say they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Wherefore we are glad. So they could not believe. They say it was like a dream. They were like dreaming. They could not believe. It's something that was unbelievable. They could not believe that the Lord can turn their captivity. You know, around. it seems to be impossible in their eyes. The Bible says what is possible is it's whatever is impossible with men. It's possible with God. And God did it for them. He turned around. And now this was the nation. God turned around the situation of, a, of an entire nation. How much more of a single individual that is trusting the Lord to turn things around for them this morning. Tell your neighbor again and tell them that God is turning it around for your good this morning. Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, the Bible says there's a scripture in the book of, of, of John. So it says that he overthrew mountains by the roots. That is how powerful your God is able to overthrow. Who else can do that by your God? Who can take up mountain and overthrow them by their roots? So God is able to turn that situation around. It doesn't matter how hard it, it looks, how impossible it looks. God is able to turn it around. Job 34 and verse 25. Job 34 and verse 25, the Bible says, Therefore, he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. The Bible says he knows their work. He knows what they are planning against your life. He knows the schemes of the devil. But the Bible says overnight he overturns them. He overturns every work. You know, everything that is working against your testimony, he is standing it around this morning. Hallelujah. So God is standing everything that was meant to harm you in this month for a testimony. Hallelujah. So Joseph looked back at the journey that he has, you know, gone through. And his, by, his brothers were before him and they were saying, uh, this was after the father died and the brother was saying, was asking for forgiveness. And they thought maybe this guy will hold it against us. But the Bible says that, you know, Job, I mean, I'm sorry, Joseph looked, I mean, he looked back at how far the Lord has brought him. He looked back at how far the Lord has brought him. And the Bible says that he wept. And Jesus wept also. He was by the tomb, you know, of, of, of Lazarus. And he wept and he said, take me to where they have laid the body. And people might have thought that you are buried. Your destiny, your dreams are buried. But Jesus wept. And he said, I have come at this tomb to come and turn situation around. I have brought life uh, where there was death. Uh, and this morning, I'm here to remind you that just as he wept and he looked back and he said, uh, you meant it to help me. And this is my own, you know, paraphrasing. But God meant it to bless many generations. He turned it around, uh, you know, for good. The enemy may have taken, he may have stolen, he may have deprived you. He might, you know, but God is standing it around for your good this morning. And I'm here to tell you this morning that a season only lasts, you know, for a moment. It doesn't mean that if it rains, it will rain the whole year. It will not be stormy all the whole year. It will not be sunny the whole year. It will not be summer the whole year. But a season is but for a moment. And I'm here to tell you this morning, things might not look like it. You are a student and things might not look like they are moving ahead. But I'm here to tell you this morning that it's a season. And that season is only for a moment. God will surely come and tell it for your good and you will look back and declare and testify of the goodness of the Lord and how God has kept you. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible says, but the God of all grace, sorry, uh, 1 Peter ch chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible says, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you 
perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. The Bible says that the suffering, that after you have suffered for a while, so the suffering is not for eternity, it's not forever, it's just for a while. And after you have gone through that which you have gone through, and after you have gone through that testing that you needed to go through, the Bible says that he's able to make you perfect, he's able to establish you, he's able to strengthen you, and he is able to settle you this morning. So the suffering is only for a while. And I'm here to encourage you this morning that in this month, God is standing it around this morning for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus, just go ahead and give a clap offering unto the Lord this morning as we celebrate him. Hallelujah. says in Psalm 1 6 the Bible says let the Lord be praised or oh, give praise to the Lord give praise to the Lord for he for he is good for his mercy is in changing forever hallelujah let's praise the Lord together in this morning for his mercy, hallelujah. Just say, God, may you receive my praise. May you receive my praise in this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, we are here for you. Just raise up your voice and say to God, may you receive my praise in this morning because I'm here for you. I'm here for you, Lord. May you receive our praise, oh Lord. Nama shata, nama, mama, mama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're serving a mighty God. Hallelujah. No one can take his place. Come on, put your hand together for Jesus. Woo! Oh 
one more time. Come on. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. One more time. I can't see you dance. Come on. God is good. In my life, God is good. His name is our God. My God is good. I'm blessed now. I will testify. I will testify. Come and say again. Come and say. Come and say. Woo! Jesus. 
Worship God. Just say, God, thank you. Because you're always by my side. Thank you, Jesus. Don't look at your neighbor. Start worship God for his mercy, for his goodness in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in this morning. Father, we love you. You're always there. Forevermore, you always. Thank you for being oh God. here. On our side. Father, we are here for you. The Bible says, if God be for us, we are here to tell you, you are holy, 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 you are holy, you are holy, 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 holy
Thank you, Jesus. Just worship God because you are here for Him. You are not here for anything else. You are here for Him. You are here for Him. Just say, God, may you touch my heart. I need your presence, Lord. I'm here for you, Lord. Wow, wow. Father God, we worship you this morning. We raise up our eyes to praise you. Yeah. We raise up our eyes to praise you, Lord. There is a song, there is a song, there is a song. We raise the song to you, Lord, this morning.
anything. May you use my life, oh God, in this morning. Wow. I know, I know.
We love you, Jesus. Come on, everybody say, God, I love you. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, oh. All this is for you, Lord. I never stop, I never stop. I never stop.
Lift up your voice in the presence of God and give him glory in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that there are creatures that are always approaching his throne and all they say is holy, 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 hallelujah. Because no words in our nature, no words in our languages can ex explicitly explain how great our God is. We run out of words when we want to describe how great he is in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, somebody, and declare that he is holy, he is holy, he is worth holy in the name of Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name, we give you all in the name of Jesus. If you can speak in your language, begin to give him honor in the name of Jesus. Begin to give him glory, the glory that he deserves. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hakuna kaita semi Jesu. In the name of Jesus. Masete debe kayata na mande. La parada basonda kayata. Father, we honor you, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, King of Kings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody, why don't you clap up your hands in the presence of the Lord? Why don't you give him a glory in the name of Jesus? Give him a shout of glory in the name of Jesus. Give him a shout of praise in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Lift up the voice.
you are a winner in the presence of God, why don't you give him another clap offering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the wonderful name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, welcome them, say you are welcome in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are seated in the most heavenly places in Christ. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. We glorify the wonderful name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can we smile in the presence of God? Hallelujah. I'm seeing some brother of mine that is not smiling. So when we are dancing, as if I dance, but when we are dancing, I always look at him and I say, I don't think you're from Congo, because he's always serious dancing like he doesn't know how to dance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to honor and appreciate all of you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. You're welcome in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Church of God, why don't you help me to welcome everyone that is serving in the house of God? I always make it special and mention the praise and worship team. But we want to honor everyone that is serving in the house of Lord. Hallelujah. Church of God, why don't you clap your hands for them as we appreciate them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to celebrate our, our parents in the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Felix and Pastor Simone, we love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate your life. Hallelujah. Somebody, if you celebrate their life, can I see it in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord, hallelujah. And if this is your very first time to be in the presence of God, here in this house, this is Royal Family Christian Center, hallelujah. And our vision, what is our vision? To raise champions and deploy champions for their divine assignments, hallelujah. I did not forget, I have it here. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So our mission is to create an atmosphere that will bring transformation to the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are in the year of greater manifestations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen God manifesting in a greater way in your life in this year? Hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord. If you did not, then the year is not yet ending. Hallelujah. We are in the month of testimonies. Hallelujah. So in this month, I believe God is going to do something that is extraordinary, hallelujah. When I gave my life to Christ, it was so powerful, hallelujah. But then there was another thing that happened while I was still a new a believer. It was a testimony that I heard from a sister, hallelujah. And that testimony was the beginning of the transformation that I've seen in my life, hallelujah. I'm not going to mention because it is not my time to say a lot of things, hallelujah. But it was a powerful testimony and it changed my life. So I believe that as God is going to transform and do wonders in our lives, those things are also going to impact the lives of the people that are around us. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I desire that God move in a mighty way that will impact each and every one around me. Hallelujah. We have prayer and counseling that is going on after the service and uh, from Tuesday to Friday during the week, so you can call our pastor. His number is provided. Hallelujah. And we have our Passover meetings, online prayer meetings, every Tuesday and every Thursday, lunch hour, hallelujah. So the login details are provided. You just log in and uh, be blessed, hallelujah. We are continuing with our 40 days of prayer, hallelujah. Uh, and the second phase is beginning on the 15th uh, of October to the 24th of October, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the uh, couple's retreat was postponed, hallelujah. I don't know if maybe it's the Lord's doing. He wants to give us an opportunity to take part. Those of us that are single, maybe by the time it's announced, the Lord would have done something awesome in our lives. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought singles were going to celebrate. Because when I saw this last time, I said, yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer and fasting is continuing. So this week from Thursday, from the 7th to the 9th of October, I think it's Thursday, this week. So we are praying and we are fasting. We'll be meeting here every day from 1800 hours. Hallelujah. And in also in the morning from 5 o'clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as for normal services, we have 
the Sunday service to this one. Hallelujah. We start from 10 a.m. But I believe at 9.30, prayers have already started. So if you want to start, if you want to come early, come early. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Online Bible studies every Wednesday from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Let's join in and let's study the word of God. Hallelujah. Every Friday, the young adults ministry from 5 o'clock. Hallelujah. So last uh, Friday, I joined and I realized that I was missing a lot. Hallelujah. It was a powerful, powerful experience in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So every young adult, you are encouraged to come. I see Dominic is there. Hallelujah. You are encouraged to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Every Saturday morning, 8 a.m., we are praying. We have morning glory prayers where we meet to pray for the church. Hallelujah. It's online. So let's join in. If you saw yesterday that the votes that were happening, hallelujah, we just saw Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. We didn't know what was happening, but we were having some votes to see should we come back to church or should we do it online. And I believe evangelist bribed everyone that voted so that he can always join online. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. So let's join in every Friday morning, um, every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Let us pray for the church. Hallelujah. And every weekday, from 5 a.m., we have morning glory prayers. Hallelujah. So there were times when I'll be tired and I think I'm not going. But this time I decided if I'm very tired, I'll just walk up and join and just be there. So sometimes I sleep also while I'm in prayer. <laughs> and, then, and then I wake up and see it's done. <laughs> so just if you feel like maybe you are so tired, you can just join in and hear the prayers. And God will do something in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The soul winning challenge, which I always mention that this will never leave the PowerPoint, hallelujah, because our lives are supposed to be uh, taking part in the soul winning, hallelujah. So just make sure that each and every day that you're living, make it a, make it a point that you spread the word of the Lord, you declare to someone the goodness of the Lord, hallelujah. We have come to the time of giving, and we have three methods of giving. We, you can use the church account. I don't know how to use this one. And you can also uh, e-wallet. The number is provided. And today, because we're in church, you can also give in person. Hallelujah. So, I just want us to all prepare our offerings as um, ushers come and help us. I'm not going to say a lot because sometimes when I say it, it's like I'm trying to encourage you to give. But today, I want the goodness of the Lord to encourage you to give. Hallelujah. 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 So let us get our offerings ready. And I hope today I will not be for, 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 for forgotten as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name today in the name of Jesus. This is the day that you've made. You have given us life into this day. Jehovah, as we offer, we are just celebrating what you're doing in our lives. We are honoring what you do in our lives. Because you loved us and you gave. Today we are giving because we love you. We are giving because we understand what you've done for us in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
greet you all in Jesus' name. We are in the house of the Lord. You may make a noise in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Amen. You are beautiful. Amen. You are beautiful. If you are ladies, say I'm beautiful. No man should tell you that. You know you are beautiful by the creation of God. If you are men, say you are handsome. Say I'm handsome. I like that. Hallelujah. Our testimony this morning is Ebenezer. This far the Lord has carried us. Hallelujah. You know what you came through until this point? And I want to tell you, Ebenezer, when they were singing the song, Holy, Holy are you Lord God Almighty. That was the song that was playing, Pastor Felix, if I may allow, if you may allow, when we walked, when I walked down the aisle, that was the song that was playing. And coincidentally, one of the people that was on the line up is sitting in the house today. So the, the word Ebenezer just came to mind. Amen. We are in October. I want you to be very, very prayerful in this month of October. But expect, be expectant. Expect to have a testimony. Young people, especially you sitting on this side and your families and your friends in the house, you know what I'm talking about. The enemy's been stealing from you. Every month we hear somebody died, the father died, the mother died. This week we also prayed again for another family. The enemy has been stealing from you. But your force or your fight or your warfare is serving God, standing in the Lord. And this month you will declare Ebenezer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray, oh God, Father, even as we tithe, we tithe because we love you. We tithe because we say, Ebenezer, Lord, you are the only one who carried us this far, oh God. No one else, nothing else. Anything and anyone, Father, is what you used and whom you used to bring us this far. And this month, we glorify your holy name. Our testimony will be every time this far the Lord has carried us. And in the faith that if you can carry us this far, greater is the road that is ahead. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, bless them. Father, bless them. Grant them their heart's desire. Answer somebody's prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we look forward to testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's give a clap offering for the Lord. God. How many of you are ready for the word of God? Hallelujah. If you are ready, why don't you clap our hands as I leave this time to our pastor. Hallelujah. to be here. If you're happy, can you smile? Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. How many of us have ever seen someone eating ice cream as though he's drinking alcohol? You know, you know, you can at least tell one who is always eating ice cream and one who is, one who is always uh, drinking um, 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 uh, tombo. You will know of course, you will see by their uh, the countenance. So what they are drinking is bitter. But ice cream, there will be a smile, not so. Amen. So can you smile? Jesus is sweet. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I believe we all watch WWE. Have you ever seen those guys smiling? Yeah, ever, ever, ever. Displaying anger. Yes. Why? Because they are full of devils. But you, you are full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you can put on a smile in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Welcome to October. We are about to say bye to the year 2021. You know, when I was young, um, in those years, it used to take long, years used to take long. I don't know what has happened to the years. I think they have been fed fed on uh, a GMO. Is it GMO? You, you call that a GMO foods? 
you know, our years, those years used to take long because our parents only used to buy us clothes on Christmas. Yeah. So we, we know, we used to wait for a long time just to eat chicken and, uh, and rice. And of course, Coca-Cola. You remember those years for those that were born in the 70s, you know, and the 60s, you know. So, but now, you know, it's like when you just go to bed, you wake up, it is a, you, it's like you wake up in the following year. So we thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is the month of testimonies. Are we ready for testimonies? Are we ready for testimonies? Are we excited? Glory be to God. So you and I are going to testify. Hallelujah. You know, you're going to testify. You know, um, the beauty of the sun is it rises on everyone. The good and the evil. It rises on, on it, it is, it doesn't uh, discriminate to say, no, I will not rise on this one. So when it is morning, it is morning for everyone. It shines on everyone. So you decide where you want to be, whether under the sun or not. Hello? Yes. So what, either if you want to be under the sun, or you go and hide somewhere from the sun. Okay. But the sun is for everyone. So this month is for everyone to testify. All you have to do is just to position yourself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And for those that are here for the first time, please, we are so glad. And you are welcome in the house of the Lord. Especially, you are welcome to Royal Family Christian Center. So please, is, is, if this is your first time, can you just raise your hand so that we may see and welcome you? Oh, wow. Can you rise to your feet? Hallelujah. Can you rise to your feet? Welcome to Royal Family. Welcome to Royal Royal Family. You are kings and do we have ladies? Okay, there she is. You are a queen, my sister. Welcome. My brothers, you are kings. Amen. Because you are in the royal family. Glory be to God. Your father is the king of kings. You are not a prince or a princess. You are a king. Glory be to God. So welcome. Hallelujah, welcome. We love you so much. Glory be to God. Let us put our hands together and welcome them in the house of the Lord. Welcome them in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning to come and worship with us. God bless you and I believe the Lord shall definitely bless your lives in Jesus' name. And uh, just want to acknowledge, uh, to acknowledge the presence of mom there. God bless you. We just enjoy to, to have you around in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you so much. You will live long. You will live long. The, um, the presence of God has a way of slowing down your aging process. How many of us know? Yes. It has a way. The, the Bible says Moses was 120. He climbed the mountain all by himself. He wasn't aided. Nobody was there to carry him. He had no stick. At 120, he climbed the mountain. And when he got there, God said, you remember what you did down there? You are not going back. And God no, it's not written. It's just an assumption. And God withdrew. So he, 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 he withdrew from him. He could not climb down. That's when he felt the edge. The edge got up with him. God did not strangle him. He just waited for him. The presence of God is so powerful. It's able to sustain you in your physical body. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Just want to welcome Emmanuel. 
That is my first fruit. First fruit in Namibia. That's the first person that I led to the Lord when I came, when I walked into, into, into Namibia. Uh, 18 years ago, 2004, he was, uh, by then he had no beard. As he, was a very, he was a young man, a young boy. Yeah. Um, so I led him to the Lord. That is my first fruit in Namibia. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that is Emmanuel. Can you stand up so they can see you? Amen. That is Emmanuel. The first person I led to the Lord. Amen. And he has been in the Lord since. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm just praying that he comes back to the Father. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm his Father. Yeah. So it's good to see you, Emmanuel. That is my wife's um, nephew. Is it nephew? Yes, nephew. Nephew is a boy. Eh? Not niece. Nephew, yes. That's my wife's nephew. Not niece. These things are, are, are too close to each other. That's my wife's nephew, Emmanuel. I'm so glad that you are in the service this morning. Love you so much. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. Are we ready for the word? Are we ready? Are we going to be happy at the end of the, of the, of the sermon? Hallelujah. This is the month of testimonies. And definitely you and I are going to testify. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm 126. Let us put it up there. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I like the way Gerald and his wife like, I you know, the way they sit. Yeah. No social distancing. <laughs> Amen. Keep it like that, child. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is it there? Psalm 126. Let us all read it. One, two, three. When the Lord brought back, can we read it? One, two, three. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Two. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Three, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Four, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Five, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Six, he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Is that the last one? Okay, let us put our hands together. Glory be to God, amen. You are going to testify, your mouth shall be filled with the laughter, your tongue shall sing in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Glory be to God, and I just want to welcome the family. Welcome, brother, my sister. Is this your son? Your brother, yes. I went home the seven, seven days I was thinking. Yeah. We thank the Lord, amen. God bless you. It's good to see you. Glory be to God, amen. The Lord shall fill your mouth with laughter. Glory be to God, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, the, the, you know, God is a good God. Because even when the enemy is doing something to you and to me, our God has already figured out how what to do. And he has already given results. Not the one Satan has. God has already given results. Good results. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just as we listened to the, uh, to the exhortation this morning, God is turning it around. Glory be to God. What the devil meant for evil, the Lord God shall turn it around. It shall end well. 
in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. We thank God for the word. Praise be to God. Now, since most of us, we don't come for Bible study on Wednesday. I'm not going to preach, to sweat, and you know. I really get tired on, on, on Sundays when, when I get home. <clears throat> so I'm going to relax, and I'm going to teach. Yes. I'm going to teach, to compensate for those missed Wednesdays, the Bible studies. And I will take long, because you will not come. So on Wednesdays, we meet for one hour, 30 minutes. So they will be now one hour, 30 minutes extra. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And I will start the message from the back. Just know that it's a long one. Amen. So, today we are going to, now we are talking about, about testimonies, and I just want to, you know, last month we laid a foundation when, when we talk about the anatomy of a blessing, which was quite an exciting a journey, an exciting subject, you know, that we tackled. And this month, we are, we are going to lay another layer on, on that building which we had begun. Amen. Are we excited? Okay. So we are going to talk about things that may help us to provoke testimonies. Because testimonies not just happen just because you and I woke up. Of course, we're even waking up is a testimony. But there should be greater testimonies than that. Everyone wakes up. Not who knows them. Everyone wakes up. Whether somebody slept under a bridge or in a palace. But the surety is that we both wake up. All right. So, we are going to understand or to, to search in the scripture the things that can help us to provoke testimonies. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, as I have said, we are going to start from the back. Then we go up. All right. Now, we are going to talk about tithing under grace. Tithing under grace. I promise that we are going to, to tackle the subject of tithing because it is one of the controversial subjects in the church today. The, the early church, even the Jewish people do not have problems when it comes to tithing. Only Christians have problems. You know, the Muslims do not have a problem to give to their cause to go and bomb something they will give. Only Christians have problems when it comes to giving. So we are going to talk to, talk, to tackle this subject of tithing. All right, are we happy? All right, so we are, we are going to, to look at the subject of tithing so that we may understand it. It may help you maybe 50%, um, maybe 40%, for some 90%, for some 99%. I'm not claiming that this is the full uh, revelation on this subject. But at least I have done a research and I have studied the subject of tithing for quite a while. Praise the Lord, amen. And I will start by giving a testimony. I got born again. I never knew about tithing at all. You know, the church that I attended, they never used to teach about tithing because they were afraid to teach. The pastor was afraid. The leaders were afraid to talk about tithing because of the past experiences, you know. So they just let it go. They never used to talk about tithing. They did not want to be misunderstood and be mistaken for people that want people from man. I mean, uh, that people money, uh, no, that want money from people. Okay, so one day, as a young man, you know, there was an outreach, a mission trip going somewhere. Now, in, the, in those years, the church never used to provide money. If you, like, you wanted to go out, you have to go and work for it. Okay, so I went to do peace works. I, I got to aunties and uncles from church. So we went and worked. I raised the money that I needed, both for transport and everything. I raised. And I remember I was on the, on the minibus when God spoke to me and he said, why can't you give 10 from that money that you have? I said, what's that? Because I never knew about it. So what's that? 
So the spirit of God inside me said, it is called time. So, so I called my pastor through the window. I said, pastor, what is tithe? So I said, who told you about tithe? I said, the spirit spoke to me to give 10 and he called it tithe. I said, oh, wow. Tithe is 10% of your income. So I started counting. I took the 10 and I passed it to him. I said, this is my tithe then. You give it because him wasn't traveling. I said, Sunday you give it or whatever time you have to give it. So that was my first encounter when God spoke to me about tithing. Um, so I began to tithe from that time. When I started working, it wasn't an issue at all to tithe. So I was tithing every, every month. Okay? I tithe faithfully. And I was in, church, in that church for only a year. Now, I did not know that people in church do not tithe. Okay? So now, because of my tithing in record now, I was only there for 12 months. Okay? Now, because of my tithing record, the church recognized me. So the pastor saw that there is this young man who is tithing every month. Who is he? Yeah. So the pastor was looking for me for two years after I'd left. Looking for me. Okay? So where is this man? He was tithing every, every month. Okay? All right. Then, in 2000, I graduated from Bible school. And I was invited to go and preach somewhere. A church that was uh, uh, pastored by a lady. And I went to preach there in my borrowed jacket. I borrowed a jacket from my uncle. I borrowed a trouser from my uncle. So most of the things that I had on my body was borrowed. <laughs> so I went to preach 2000 in that church. And the spirit of God moved so mightily, you know, and it was a church that was in the location, deep in the location. So there was an interpreter who was a lady and a pastor too. That so I was preaching the power of, of, of course, heat has as well. And, you know, the power of God just moved in that service. So one lady uh, came to the front and she was on her knees crying bitterly. So I was so moved because she was crying. So I went to her and I wanted to lay hands on her. And the Spirit of God stopped me, said, don't lay hands on her. I said, why, Lord? I said, she does not tithe. I said, what? So I bent over and I said, ma'am, do you tithe? She said, no. I said, what do you do? I said, I'm a businesswoman. I said, do you have money at home? He said, yes, for business. I said, why can't you take tennis and bring it to church and tithe? She said, no. I said, wow. So I tried to convince her. You know what she did? She stood up, cleaned her face. <laughs> said, it's better I go with my problem than to part with a thing. God wasn't interested. I came to understand later. God wasn't interested in the ties. He was interested in the condition of the heart. So she left. I do not, I never met her again. It was 2000, about 21 years ago. We never met. Okay. Now, through the years, began to preach. 2000, should be 2001, and God spoke to me, said, do not preach the way the money is preached because prosperity is not money. Prosperity is the condition of the heart. See, it, it, it is about the heart. So he, so he said to me, said, no, do, do not so much emphasize money. It's the heart issue. It's, uh, it is, it's to do with the condition of the heart. That's when I heard for the first time, God, God spoke to me and said, money only magnifies the state of the heart the condition of the heart. It only magnifies whatever condition the heart is. Okay. So I said, do not talk so much about money. Talk about the, the state of the heart. 
I tried. So now, everywhere I went preaching, I did not talk about money. I was talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, every time when I talked about the Holy Spirit, there was so much power that people would start giving. Now I was wondering, Lord, what is this? I did not talk, I do not even want this because those years, I wasn't so much into money like, you know, no, no, no. Um, what I mean is, um, I went into ministry not because I wanted money. That's the, that's the truth. Because I was refusing money. If somebody gives, gave me money, the first church I was attached to, the first money that I was given, I gave it back all, all of it. I said, I don't want it. I did not come here for money. Okay. So, I did not come into ministry because I want money. No. I used to be invited. And instead of being given money, I would end up giving my everything that I came with. Okay. So, I do not preach for money. No. I preach because I am called, mandated to do it, and I love it. I love to do what I do. All right. So, I just want to lay that so that we can understand, even as we talk about this. No, 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 don't think. I'm after your pocket. Um, the benefits of tithing under grace. Let, as I said, we'll start from, from the conclusion. The benefits of tithing under grace. Number one, it is the proof of our trust in God. So please just mark those. Number one, it is the proof of our trust in God. Tithing. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Matthew 6, 24. The reason why we should tithe, it is the proof of our trust in God. I am proving that I trust God. I, I, prove to, I am proving that I trust God. Matthew 6 verse 24. The Bible says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can never serve God and mammon. So you can never serve both. Okay. So how can we save money? How can we save money? It is very simple to know how money can be saved. Our, the way we look at it the way we look at money, the way we regard money. When I was young, I used to go and watch the miners. I grew up in a mining town. The miners coming from their pay. In those years, there were no ATM machines. So the money wasn't put in the banks. They used to go and queue up, queue in the mine premises. Then they were paid, paid like just giving money like that. So now I used to see them coming. Now that intrigued me because of the way they would come rushing. All these other days they would walk normally and chat. But the payday, you would see the pace. You would know there is money. You would even know where the money is. Because that's where the hand will be. If the money was here, the hand will be here. If the man was here, it will be here. Okay? That's why Jesus said that where your money is, that's where your heart is. Your treasure is. That's where your heart is. I would rather have my head cut off than my hand because it is protecting my... So they would walk like that. So you would know where the money is. And they are not rushing home. You are rushing somewhere else. Okay. Number two, it demonstrates faithfulness and mastery over money. Tithing under grace. It demonstrates faithfulness and mastery over money. So, one can be mastered by money. And one can master over money. 
Never underestimate money. Money has the power. Never underestimate money. It demonstrates faithfulness and mastery over money. God does not need money. God, he lives in heaven. There is no money in heaven. But why does God ask us to give? Not because he needs it. He's, he's, simply, he's simply asking us so that we can have mastery over money. We can be lords over money. You can only master something that you can part away with. Hello. The Lord spoke to me. I received, I've, I've, I always share this testimony. I will not, when the cell phones came, someone sent a cell phone to us, several pastors. The Motorola, you know, you remember those Motorola? With a scenario, you know, you pull it, a big one, and it had, you know, you put it somewhere here on your belt. It was a prestige having one. Okay? So I had one. And it was an analog. I think it was analog. It could not work in my town. Only Lusaka had analog provision. Okay? So if I wanted to go, you would travel to Lusaka, which was about 400 kilometers. Okay? So now, it was here. I was moving with it. I met a pastor, one pastor. He was depressed because he had no cell phone like us. Okay? And he didn't know that our cell phones were not working. We were just moving with them. And if you were in a jacket, you put your jacket over so that people can see you at work. Okay? So now God knew this boy is in trouble with this phone. <laughs> He's in trouble with this phone. So in the service in the evening on a Sunday, God said, will you give that phone? Say, Jesus, my Motorola. <laughs> I went outside. Say, God, no. So I went outside. I took off my jacket. I took off my shirt. Said, instead of my cell phone, I will give my shirt. That's what I gave. And God told me, the person to give. There was a lady, a pastor, said, you give that cell phone to her. I took off my shirt and I threw it in the basket. And when the people saw that, they saw it as a big sacrifice. But they didn't know what was there? The state of my heart. The cell phone had gotten hold of me. I could not control that thing. It was controlling me. I could disobey God because of the cell phone. Are we together? So it demonstrates faithfulness and mastery over money. Luke 16 verse 11. Let us put it up there. Luke 16 verse 11. Luke 16, verse 11. Luke 16, verse 11. Put it there. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, what is the unrighteous mammon? Come on. What is the uh, unrighteous mammon? It is money. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? So there is something that is greater and above money. Yes. There's something that is great and above, above money. God does not give money. God gives through riches. That's why all this miracle, money, is just a hoax. God does not give money like straight from heaven. Boom, money. No, no, no. God gives us the true riches that will do what? That will pull the money. Will bring the money. Are we together, saints? Okay. So he gives us the true riches. That how will that come when we are faithful in the unrighteous mammon? Number three, it destroys covetousness and selfishness. Tithing under grace destroys covetousness and selfishness. Man is born selfish. Remember when you were young, no one taught you how not to share. Did you go to school? How many of us went to school? 
I said, this is what we do. Children, they are born with it. You know, my uncle was my, my uncle was younger than me, you know, and my grandmother she used to keep bananas. How many of us like bananas? I love bananas. So she would take those bananas, keep them in the bedroom, and would just be giving one to the small one. Those big ones give one to, to him. So he would come running around and eating a banana. So now we would be following him. So one day we said, no, we just want to test. Yeah, the boy was stingy, very selfish. So that day, even helped us. But to, just to make us understand. You see, guys, you have, but in these bananas, there is no sugar. Because he, his, his understanding was the only thing you can taste is sugar. There is no sugar at all. Okay? Why? He was born selfish. Every man is born selfish. And we're together. We are born selfish. That's why there are certain things we don't have to be taught. We have to be taught how to give and share. Yes. Okay. Are we together? So, tithing under grace, it destroys covetousness and selfishness. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. It destroys covetousness and selfishness. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. Are we there? I speak not by commandment. But, I'm test, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. Okay. It's testing the sincerity. That is in the context of giving. So, of your love, love gives. So, it destroys covetousness and selfishness. So, love can never cohabit with selfishness. The two can never be found together. Number four, it is a pathway for increase. It's a pathway for increase. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. It's a pathway for increase. We do not pray for financial increase. Can I hear an amen? We do not pray for financial increase. No. A farmer does not pray for the harvest. Have you ever seen a farmer? Say, oh, shoto. And he calls the intercessors to walk into his farm. No. A farmer has a mind that if I do not put anything in the soil, nothing will come out. Is that true? He will be a good farmer. A, 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 he's a good farmer. Powerful farmer, but if a farmer decides that year not to plant, he will not have an harvest the following day. I mean the following year. Is it true? Yes. Okay. So there are things we do not pray for. You can never fast for money. That's why I am against miracle money. Sincerely. You can say it. doesn't work like that. God is not a thief. He can never rob a bank on your behalf. He can never go and take MTC recharge card. And tinting on your phone, God has stolen. Where has the recharge has come? Common sense, are we together? God can never break natural laws. Okay. Are we together? <laughs> That's why Paul came and said, you know, you do what? Now you are born again. You do what? Work. Do what? Work. What, what did he say? Salvador? Work. If you do not work, you do what? Don't eat. Is, is God cruel? He's simply observing natural law. You cannot be fed when you are not working. You don't have to eat. Okay. It's a natural law. Okay. So he cannot say, because you are born again, manna will be falling. No. Okay. I, I like what Mao said. He said, you know, miracles are for lazy people. That's why, you know, when, when, um, when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, what happened? Miracles ceased. Manna ceased. Do you remember that? 
You read your Bible. Manna ceased. Manna stopped. It was raining for how long? For 40 years. The moment they entered the promised land, manna ceased. Said, I can't be feeding you for, you have to work the land. Eat from the, what is coming from the ground. Because that is the natural way. Not raining from heaven. So you and I, we are not designed to live on angels' food. But from what is coming from the ground. Can you say amen? amen. So it is a pathway for increase. Pathway for increase. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. And 10. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. It says, as it is written, he has dispensed abroad. He has done what? Dispensed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Who wrote these words? Who wrote them? Paul. Number 10. Now, may he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. They have to be a sowing brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That is not making you righteous. That's what I'm saying. We laid the foundation. That is not making you righteous. You now being righteous. You have now to do the works of righteousness. Now the Bible says that you know, now without works, faith is void. Or you, can, can, you, can you paraphrase it better? The words. Yeah, without faith, I mean, without works, your faith is what? Dead. Okay? There, in that context, you know, James wasn't saying that you need words for your salvation. He was simply saying, now that you are saved, demonstrate your faith by do what? By now working out the works of righteousness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many of us have ever seen a lion? A lion born as a cub. It's born a, a cub. When it grows into a, into a big lion, what happens? It will begin to roar. It is born a natural king. It will begin to roar. It will start doing what a lion does. Yes. Okay. Because it is born a lion. Number four. Eliminates poverty. Eliminates poverty. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4 verse 34. Acts chapter 4 verse 34. Eliminates poverty. Eliminates poverty. Paying the, the benefits of tithing under grace eliminates poverty. Acts chapter 4 verse 34, the Bible says, Now, was there anyone among them who lacked? For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and shared among them. And the Bible says there was no one that lacked. It eliminates poverty. There is, you know, the communal poverty. Do you know that there, there can be a communal poverty? Communal poverty. Okay. But giving eliminates communal poverty. Eliminates communal poverty. It has got to the beginning. And then we're going to close. We'll continue. Can somebody say amen? amen. Glory be to God. I told you that I'm not going to make myself sweat. Tithing under grace. Tithing has become a subject of interest and has attracted a, a lot of controversy. The, um, I visited one lady that really made me to think. Uh, we were arguing about tithing. So she said, me, I do not tithe. And look at, at how God has blessed me. I, had, I, had, I, did not, I did not have the understanding that I have today. I said, I'm driving a Benz. I said, wow. And myself, I was driving a Ford, a small Ford. So I'm driving a Benz, a big one, you know. So I said, oh, wow. So she, 
So now, before we start arguing about the tithing, she was talking about the problems she had at home. Okay, anyway. Listen. Um, the controversy around the tithing is people argue and they say, what about those who are not born again and they are prosperous? People like Bill Gates. Do they tithe? They don't. They don't tithe. But why are they prosperous? We are missing a point. Okay. Missing a point. The, the Bible says that the people of this world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. Uh, Jesus said the, that the children of this world are wiser than the children of the kingdom. What did Jesus mean? He meant to say that the children of the world, they use their system. The children of God do not use their system. They use the system of the world. Okay. So they prosper according to their system. Hello. Yes. They prosper according to their system. You, you are in a different kingdom. You are a child of the living God. So you can never say, since Bill Gates is not tithing and is prospering, I'm also not going to tithe and I shall prosper. You are not in his world. You are not of the world, though you are in the world. Okay. And we're together, says. Okay, now, many people have misunderstood this subject of tithing. Even pastors, us, we have even misused it. We have even used it to abuse and to take advantage of others. Tithing. Okay. And we just bring out some corrections and put it in the right perspective so that we may understand it properly. Okay. Now, the subject of tithing, okay, has got two first, or let me say, has got two systems. It, it, it can be done under the law or under grace. Are we together? Okay. So it has two systems. The tithing can be done under the law or under grace. The system can be done according to the law or according to faith. The law, I mean, ties can be done by the letter or by the spirit. You just have to choose which one you want. Okay. So now, if I find myself born of Jesus, born of the spirit of God, I am born of the spirit, so now which one should I observe? The letter or the spirit? The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Okay, are we together? All right, now, listen. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. I'm reading a lot of scripture so that um, you do not see me at the end of the service. You know, someone came to me 2003. I preached, and I thought I preached very well, so he came to me, Pastor, you lied. I said, well, what lie did I tell? He said, you, you said... Uh, Abraham lied. I said, yes, he lied when he said it wasn't uh, his wife, it was his sister. But, but, I said, but he said, no, but that was the truth. It was his sister. I said, she was his wife too. So he lied. Half truth is a lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that, that was a blue, uh, you, you, you call it a white lie. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Glory be to God. 14. Let us read it. 14. Quickly. 14. Can we go there? Uh -huh. For if those who are of the law are heirs, 
Faith is made void and the promise made of no if now listen, just stay here. Okay. So now there is faith here and there is the law here. Okay. So now there were people that tithe under the law. Are we are we together? And there are people that tithe under under faith. Okay. Now it is talking about Abraham. Who is he talking about? Abraham. Abraham is our father of faith. Glory be to God. So now Abraham tithes. Tithes is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 14. When Abraham, in fact it was called Abraham, when Abraham met Melchizedek. So that is the first time tithe is mentioned. So now in the Bible, we have to observe the first mentions. Every time when something is mentioned for the first time, take note. And they said to there, what happened? Let us go to Genesis chapter 14. Quickly. So now, tithing might be implicit in the New Testament, but in the spirit, it is very explicit. Okay. The... Let us first look at the first mentions. Um, I'm skipping some of the things. The first mentions. Genesis chapter, f- chapter 14 and verse 6. No, 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 no. Go to Genesis 15. Genesis 15, verse 6. Go there. The first mentions. Okay. And he believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. He believed in the Lord. Who believed in the Lord? Abraham. Now, what happened prior to this encounter with God? Let us go to Genesis chapter 14. Okay? Genesis chapter 14. Let me just locate it here. I didn't write it in my notes. Genesis 14. Verse 23. 23. Go to 14, 23. Bible says that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap and that I will not take anything that is yours lest you should say I have made Abraham rich. 24. Except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me. Anna, Eshko, and so on, them take their portion, 25. 25? Is there 25? Okay, go to 22. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the most high God the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, this is the con- this is the encounter Abraham had with Melchizedek. Okay? When Melchizedek appeared and what happened there? Melchizedek came and he praised God for blessing Abraham. I want you to because this is a pattern of how we tithe under grace. What Abraham did. You know, listen. The pattern is, listen, the pattern is Abraham went head about Lord being taken as as captive. Okay, so Abraham took his men, 318. They went after the people that had taken his nephew, Lord. Now, the pattern is, listen, Abraham is the picture of the church. Abraham is the picture of the church. Lord is the picture of the world. Melchizedek is the picture of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Glory be to God. Now listen. So when he, when Abraham, the church, heard his nephew had been taken captive, 
he stood up and went after his nephew to go and rescue him. So now we have been called to rescue, to snatch people from the fires of hell, to bring them into the kingdom of God. Now, this is the template. Listen to me. Now, when he returned, when he returned, he met Melchizedek, who had no father or mother, who you know, nobody knew where he had come from. So he appeared and he presented before, uh, before Abraham the wine and the bread. Are we together, saints? He presented the bread and the wine before Abraham. Jesus in the Bible said that this is my, this bread is my body. This, uh, this wine is my blood. Take it. Come on, somebody. Take it. And as you do this, you are doing it in, in remembrance of me. So now that was a revelation of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? So now that was a revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. So now, now Abraham had, Abraham had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Now listen, tithing under grace. So the moment he had a revelation of Jesus Christ, he wasn't commanded to tithe at all. Just because he had an encounter with Jesus, he took the tithe. Not giving is a problem with the revelation of Jesus in our lives. Abraham did not pay tithes because the law said so. Because Moses said so. He was compelled. Nobody knew about tithing. He was simply compelled. Just like I was on that minibus, I did not hear it from man. But the Holy Ghost impressed it on my heart that we have to do this. Okay, so that's what happened to this man. Nobody commanded him to do so. He did not die because he was afraid to be cursed. Because he had the revelation of Jesus. So now, our tithing should be as a result of the revelation of Jesus. We are not going to struggle. I have the revelation of Jesus. That's why I give. Not because the law says so. No, I'll get tired. Not because the letter says so. I am born of the spirit. I have an encounter. I am born of Jesus. I am born again. I am regenerated. I am the righteousness of God. Now listen. And then Melchizedek began to praise God who had blessed Abraham. It is, it, it, it is so interesting. The Bible says, and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. <laughs> How did he bless him? By praising God. Yes, by praising God. The revelator, by praising God. And then, Abraham took out the tithes. Now listen, so now, he wasn't, he did not bring out the tithes because he was coveting the blessing. No, he took out the blessing because he had a revelation of Jesus Christ. He knew that I am blessed. He knew that by the grace of God I have come back alive. He knew that this is not man. This is not man's doing. We were only 319 and we conquered the five kings. How could this be? This can only be God. Come on somebody. This is the grace of God. So he took out the tithe. And we together saints. Glory be to God. So tithing is touched to the revelation of trust. To the revelation. Yeah, people that say, ah, what if I do not tithe? If you struggle with 10, <laughs> you struggle with 10 because, and we'll get there and I'll be ending. My brothers and sisters, if you and I struggle with 10, We cannot stand Jesus' teachings because they were more stiffer than that. Very hard. Very harsh. It sounded harsh. Put yourself in the shoes of a young man who came to Jesus. And he said, I have done all this. Now, I'll give you a very nice picture. This young man came to Jesus. He was boasting of how he has kept the law. 
Was he, was he a tither? Let me ask you. Was he a tither? Was he a tither? Come on. Huh? He was a tither. Good. He was a tither because he was a law keeper. Okay? So now Jesus said, told him, said, but you lack in one thing. You have done all this very well. You lack in one thing. Okay. Go and give everything you have. Sell them and give to the poor and come and follow me. Why did Jesus say? Because he knew his heart. Then come and follow me. What did that, the young man do? The man, the Bible says, he was grieved. Grief is associated with loss. Okay? So he was grieved. He was so sad. He was so depressed. How can I give? This is my time. This, no, my life is 45. That's why, you know, when we listen to some messages, you know, money does not answer all things. You know who, who said those things? Solomon. Solomon said, money answers all things. You know, what template was he using? Okay. What template was he using? Under which dispensation did he say those words? Okay. Money answers all things. Come on. Money doesn't answer all things. Money can buy a house. It can never buy a home. Money can sponsor your wedding. It can never buy good marriage. Not at all. Money can never buy good health. Can buy medicine. There are things money cannot do. It has limitations. Okay. Solomon was speaking from the Babylonian perspective. The way the world reasons. Now listen. When we are reading the Bible, listen, when we are reading the Bible, we have to see it in this way. These are the words of man. God was simply reporting the way man thinks. Okay, so man doesn't answer all things. That was a Babylonian reasoning, a Babylonian thinking. It is a trusting in money. Hello? Are we together? Do you still love me? Okay. Now, giving in the New Testament and we'll be closing. Giving is first mentioned in Acts when the church or when believers gave liberally. The believers gave all and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit who is the author of the Bible puts the spotlight on Barnabas, the Levite. Come, go there to Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Just go to 30, 36, I think. 36. Look at the time. And it came to pass, uh, no, no, no. Acts chapter 4, verse 36. Quickly. And Joseph, who's Joseph? Who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. Now, why is the Bible, why did the Bible pick out Barnabas. Not that, why? Why did the Bible only mention Barnabas the Levite? And it even mentions his tribe. He was a Levite. Why? Because under the old covenant, the Levites were the ones receiving the tithes. Are we together? Because the Levite tribe was a priesthood tribe. These are the people that were receiving the, the tithes and the offerings. The Levites, we are the priests, okay? Now, who are we now? Come on. Who are we? Who are we? We are, now, the reason why they are, the Holy Spirit had to mention it because it's important, especially for a Jewish person to understand and for those that will come later like us to come under and understand that a Levite of the country of Cyprus who was Barnabas, he also sold his stuff and gave. These people were simply receiving the tithes and they had no inheritance among their, among their brothers. They, were not, they never received any portion. They never received land. Their portion was their tithes. 
Their portion was the presence of God. So that's what God gave them. And God said, this is my faith. God took the Levite tribe as his belonged to them. But now, under the new covenant, things changed. Listen to me. Things changed. And we together. Things went back to Abraham. Things went back to Abraham. Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. Okay. Abraham did what? Abraham ties to Melchizedek and the Hebrews tells us that Levi also who was in Abraham's bosom ties to Melchizedek. So who are we? We are priests. According to Revelation. Who are we? We are priests and we do what? We have to tie. We have to give. Now, how do we give? Listen to me. How do we pay our tithes. Okay? We do not pay tithe according to the law. According to the law, it is 10. Are we together? According to the law, it is 10. How many of us struggle if you have $15? Jesus. What's the tithe? $15. It's $1 50 cents. You do not have 50 cents. Oh, what am I going to do? You start asking in the house, anyone with 50 cents, you want to pay tithes. You want to be on the dot. That is giving out of necessity. It has become a burden. Then, if you get you know, a salary, maybe they are, you don't know these uh, funny uh, salaries with 0.99. You know, when you go to the shops, you find 99 cents at the end. So now, you want, now, where will I get this 99, you know, to pay tithe? Because the Bible says 10%. There are people that argue, should I pay, should, should, should I give my, my, my tithe from the net or from the what you said, the other or, 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 or from the gross. You don't have to argue. Are we, are we together? Only someone who is under the law can argue. You are under grace. Listen to me. Okay? Now, how do we give under grace? We give 100%. So, if I have 1,000, I give it all. So, so, Someone, I can hear somebody saying, I'm, I'm leaving church. Listen, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> you give all. Okay? You give all. Why? Because all belongs to God. There is nothing that you have that is not God's. So how do you give under grace? You do not give like the law. Under grace, 10 is a minimum. Ten is the minimum one can give. That's why Jesus said that if you guys cannot surpass these Pharisees and the Sadducees' righteousness, you, are, you have beaten it. Now, how is the Pharisees' righteousness defined? It is defined in this manner. They were pay, they were tithers. They were committed tithers. They were paying tithes committedly. And Jesus recommended them. And he even said that you guys, you are good. I recommend you. But you have neglected the most important things, to love others. Do this and do not neglect what you do. And when he came now to the disciples, he said, you guys, these guys are committed. But you have to surpass their righteousness. In other words, their righteousness of giving, their righteous works of giving, they were more committed to giving. The Pharisees, they were more committed they were performers. But now you are born of the spirit. You have to surpass that, that line. You have to be better than them. Do you know what I said? So now when it comes to giving, listen to me, children of God. We, do, we don't pay with a calculator. I need 10. It has to balance. 
Okay. Under grace, listen, to be under grace, not to be under law, we have to outdo or to do more than the Pharisees, the way they did their things. We should not be stuck to 10. Listen to me. We should not be stuck to 10. The 10 is a starting point. I'm not saying do not do it. Do it, but do not do it under the spirit of the law. Do it under the spirit of grace. The Bible tells us that, you know, our giving should be under grace. We should give according to what? Grace. It is because of time. I cannot go through all the scriptures. Saints, listen to me. Oh. Let us read quickly, quickly, please. Just bear with me. Second Corinthians chapter Chapter 9, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Um, giving under the new covenant. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse, I mean, chapter 9, verse 6. The Bible says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And verse 7, quickly, 7, quickly. 7, 7, 7. So let each one give as he purposes. Now, that is very, very crucial. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. This word here, necessity, it is as though demanded from us, and a figure is given. Are we together? Now, we have to give as each one has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly. Grudgingly is the law demanding from us. Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful what? A cheerful giver. It is not coming here dancing and saying, let us give so, so that we may be blessed. That is not what cheerfulness Suggest it is when I am giving it with the full understanding that I am under grace for whom the Son of God has set free. It is free indeed. I am giving because I am free. Are we together? I'm giving because I am free. I'm not doing this under compulsion. I'm not giving this because I am afraid that if, 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 if I don't do it, something bad might happen to me. No, I'm giving this because Jesus Christ is in my life. I am born again. I am a child of the living God. That's why I give. Are we together? So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. Or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. If we had to ask for change in change, and no, people make you up. I made a mistake. I need change. Grudgingly. Or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful what? A, a cheerful giver. And verse 8. Let us read. And God is able to make all grace. God is able to do what? Abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good way. Glory be to God. So now, if I am doing that, I am giving under grace, there shall be sufficiency in my life. I shall lack no good thing because I am using the pattern that is under grace. Are we together? Verse, verse 9. And as it is written, he has dispensed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And verse 10. Now, may he who supplies seed to the sower, and so on and so forth. We read this one. Let us go to Philippians chapter, I mean, Philemon chapter 1, verse 14. And we are going to close soon. Philemon chapter 1, verse 14. Philemon is in the New Testament. Philemon chapter 1, verse 14. Quickly, please. Philemon. Chapter 1. Uh -huh. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing. That your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. So now listen, saints, listen. Giving should be a voluntary thing. You know, we have to be free when it comes to giving. You know, the, what really, I, there's a time, it should be 2019. I decided to say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this anymore, man. Um, 
I don't want to talk because when I talk about it, I see people giving. I don't like it. Honestly. I don't like when I preach, I talk about that's when people start paying tight and say, so, well, they have read. And after a while, they stop. So what happened? Here? You know? So that people should understand that this is me. This is my life. This is who I am. And this is, this is me. I'm a giver. Whether I'm encouraged or not, I don't have to be reminded. No one is reminded. No, no one is reminded to eat. We just got to eat. It is, it is a natural desire. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So we have to do it naturally. It has to come out of our being. I am a giver. Now, give, the giving under the new covenant is without a limit. Without a stiffness. It, it has to be dem, it, it, it has to be a free exercise. I am free. I do it freely. I, am, I don't have to do it because there was a preacher. That's why when a, a visiting preacher comes, he fires a message. We give. We are afraid. Especially you know, the, 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 the preacher in Zambia who said, he preached and everyone was afraid. He even said, you have to give the sin offering and so on. And people were giving. They gave so much, even towards sin offering. I heard about that. I said, come on. People re responded to that. He said, yes. Okay. We should give because we are free. Whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. That's the spirit that we should give. I'm paying my tithe because I am free. I'm a child of God. So no preacher should come and make you to pay tithes. And after a preacher goes, you stop paying tithes. Whom did you pay your tithe to? You paid your tithe to a preacher. But we did not pay tithe to a preacher. We paid tithe to Jesus, the revelation of Christ Jesus in our lives. I am saved. I'm a child of God. That's why I do it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You never get tired. Never get tired. If you give me $10, I cannot give $1. No. Okay? Tithe is not in my mind anymore. I don't see it as a no. When I have money, I don't see tithe. No. I don't see 10%. I see I should give. Yes. I'm not bound. I am free. So I can give. I can take the, the $10 that I, I can put it there. What is in my mind is I am giving to God. The God that loves me. And I love him too because of what he has done in my life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So it has to be done freely. Freely. Do it freely. Not under compulsion. Freely. Not out of necessity. Freely. Not because you are obeying, you know, some laid down, you know, commandments. No, no, no. Do it freely. Why? Because Jesus has set you free. You are given because of the revelation of Jesus Christ. In your life, I am saved. I am the righteousness of God and I am under the grace of God. That's why I gave. Why so important? The blessing. We acknowledge that. If it is under compulsion, the grace, we are going to do what? We are going to frustrate the grace of God. Why? Because grace equals rest. <laughs> yes. So when you are doing it as though you are the one, your giving is the one doing it. You have said grace aside. Let me do it. Are we together, saints? That's why it is so important to understand that. Let us rise to our feet. Just lift your lift up your hands to the Lord this, this afternoon. Glory be to God. Father, thank you. Give you the glory and the praise. Father God, I pray. Even as we are in the month of testimonies, just lift up your hands as we are in the month of testimonies. I pray that God we may provoke those testimonies away. Father God, we are not here to pay tithes so that we may please you. Mighty God, we do it because of the revelation of Christ in us. 
we have been made free and we have your nature which is the giving nature and we don't want to do it because we are under compulsion out of necessity or because someone persuaded us to do so or somebody convinced us to do so or someone my God talked us into doing it and we were afraid for God the Bible says that fear torments but love casts out fear mighty God may we do it according to faith according to grace according to the new covenant father in the name of Jesus Lord let the spirit of grace rest upon us my God that father we shall not be that God shall not do it for the eye of man but he shall do it only for, for one eye the eye of Jesus the son of the living God father Lord we pray that to God Almighty, that Lord, we shall operate under the grace of God. That Father, every lack in our life shall be terminated as a result of the blessing of God upon our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, child of God, I speak this grace over your life. If I told there had been struggle in the area of time, child of God, you had questions. I speak liberty. I speak liberty. Let there be the revelation of Christ in your life. In your life. I pray in the name of Jesus for you will do it not unto man but unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you're not doing it curvaciously or being callable but because you understand who you are in Christ. I am the righteousness of God. I am born of a spirit. I'm just like God, my father. For he gave his only begotten son that I may be saved. I have his nature. It is a giving nature. I give not out of necessity, not out of compulsion, not, not out of compulsion. Not because somebody has convinced me, but because the Holy Ghost has spoken to me. I am led of a spirit. I do it according, according, according to grace. Thank you, Father. May the grace of the Lord rest upon you. Father God, I pray that to God there shall be no lack in the house of God. There shall be no lack, my God, Lord, in your children's lives. I pray that God, Father God, even as your people saw, Father, may they do it under this revelation that I am saved. I am under grace. This is not performance. This is according to grace because of what Jesus Christ has done. Father God, may you honor your people even in this month of testimonies. Let there be testimonies, my God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, if you have never tithed before, I'm here to challenge you. Start with a tenth. Start with a tenth. If you have been tithing, child of God, go a step, a step forward. Step up. Let me say, let, challenge yourself. So let, let me not just stick to 10. You know, I can do better. I refuse to be bound. I refuse. I'm not a law observer. I am led of the Spirit of God. And I'm going to do better. I am going to do better. I'm going to be led of the Holy Ghost. Mom, the moment we decide, the Holy Ghost will start leading us. Leading us, children of God. The Holy Ghost can never lead us when there is law present. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Gives life. Even in the area of finances, be led of the Spirit of God. Let us be led where finances are concerned. We should not just be stick to the letter. Be led of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is personal. The Holy Ghost can, cannot just be speaking to you about it. No. No, no. The Holy Ghost speaks according to what is there the needs. God can speak to you. And when God tells you to do something, he does not want to take from you and never, never, never do something about it. He knows. He knows. He knows. He's simply making us to understand that our trust should not be in money. Our trust should be in the Lord. Just open your, your, your spirit to the spirit of God. Let us do that, children of God. 
in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. There are so many needs in the house of God. So many things that has to be done. So many things, so many things. You know, we need a better place. This is a good, good place. We need to move. We need to go to a better place, a bigger place. But money will never come from heaven. It will come from here. God does not rain money from heaven. There are so many things that will be done. There are people to be helped. There are orphans to be helped. There are people who are naked that need to be clothed. Children of God, let us do something about it in the mighty name of Jesus. Never look at yourself as a needy person. Come on. You are a resource. You are a resourceful person. Glory be to God. See yourself as, as blessed. Start where you are in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. If you have never tithed, start with 10. That is the minimum you can start with. Glory be to God. And do it cheerfully, excitedly. Praise be to God. Not out of necessity. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let there be liberty. Let there be liberty in our hearts. Let there be liberty, my God. Let our, our hearts be right in the mighty name of the Lord. May we not be found wanting, my Father. God, fill us, my Father, with the joy of doing it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together for Jesus. The one that has liberated us. The one that has saved us. The one that has saved us. The one who is full of grace and the truth. Come on, put your hands together. I'm doing it cheerfully. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Give Jesus a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. He has done it. He has done it. You are free. Come on, go ahead. Give Jesus a praise. My giving is free. My giving is free. Give him the glory. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit just telling me to tell you this in the closet. To say that the Holy Ghost never talked about tithing in the New Testament. And the reason is this. It is the dispensation of grace. He never wanted to confine you to the letter. He wanted to free us. For this is the reason why he came. To free us. To free us. To free us. To be led by the spirit. Not to be led by a figure. To be led by the spirit of God. God impressing on us. Impressing on us. You are born of the Holy Ghost, child of God. And the Spirit of God is saying that when you do that, when you do that, you are coming under the pattern of, according to the order of Melchizedek, according to the order of Christ Jesus. When you do that, you can never go wrong, child of God, praise be to God, because the priesthood have changed. The high priest is Jesus Christ. It is no longer Aaron, but Jesus the Lord, the one who came from Judah, not from, not from the Levi tribe, child of God. Oh yes, we are destined for greater things. Bless you are. Come on, put your hands once again for Jesus. The one that has liberated you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are not under Aaron. You are under Jesus, the son of the living God. You are liberated. You are not led by the letter. You are led by the spirit of God. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God be with you. May God be with you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sorry, sir. 
Can you just rest your feet? That is when this father, uh, that's the, the daughter there. Yeah, we, we met last week, Sunday, and they said, I will come to church. I'm so honored that you fulfilled your words. You are a man of your words. God bless you, sir. God bless you, amen. I appreciate you so much. Glory be to God. God bless you, amen. So much peace. Yeah. 